Number 19, calculate the pH and the pOH of each of the following solutions at 25 degrees Celsius for which the substances ionize completely. And then we have letter C. So in this case, we have 0 0.000071 molarity of barium hydroxide, which is BaOH2. Now, they did give us a little hint as to what's going on here. They told us that the barium hydroxide is going to ionize completely. Another word for, or another way to say ionize completely is that this compound will break down into its ions if we wrote an equation to it. Now, they were nice, right? But how would I know this if, well, how would I know that barium hydroxide ionizes completely if they didn't say it? Well, barium hydroxide is one of our strong bases, SB. And I listed out all of the strong bases. There's six of them. So here's barium hydroxide. It's one of the last out of the bunch. All of these six strong bases will ionize completely. So you'll do the same type of idea if they gave us any of these other five strong bases. So the first thing is, I'm just going to show that out via an equation. We have barium hydroxide, Ba, OH2, and it just dissociates or breaks down 100% if it's in an you know, aqueous solution into its two ions, right? But the thing is, now i got to figure out what those two ions are. Well, here's our polyatomic hydroxide, so that always stays together. So the break has to be between barium, the metal, and hydroxide, the polyatomic. So I have Ba, that's a 2+, plus because it's in group 2 on the periodic table. And then we have lovely hydroxide, which is always a OH-. minus. But now we just have to make sure that we're balancing the equation. We had one barium, one barium. But now I have two hydroxides on my left side, but I only have one here. What number am I going to put in the front here? Yeah, a two. Now, we're all balanced and we're ready to go. Now what I'm going to say is, okay, I'm going to say that I have zero point, geez, one, two, three, four, okay, zero point zero 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 seven one molarity for the BaOH2. But now I just have to find out, well, how much of that is barium 2 plus and how much is the hydroxide? Well, this, since it's 100% breaking down, you can use your mole ratios, aka your coefficients in the front. It's a 1 to 1 to 2. So that means that if I'm trying to find out what the barium concentration is, whatever number this is, it has to be the same. Literally, 1 to 1, they're the same number. So if I have 0 0.000071 molarity for the barium hydroxide, what am I going to have for this? Yeah, it's going to be the same. 0 0.000071 molarity. But now what's going to happen with the hydroxide? I have two of them. So whatever amount that I have here, a 1, this is 2 times the amount. Literally, times 2. 2 times. So I have to take the 0 0.000071 and times it by 2. So this would now be 0 0.000, I think now I'm entering that 0 digit, what is that, 142? Let's, let's give it a go, 142. Whoop, 14, hold on a second, 142 molarity, and now I'm just going to calculate it because just for the video's sake, Yep, 142 times 10 to the negative fourth. One, two, three, four. Beautiful. All right. Now keep in mind that we're trying to find out the pH and the pOH. I had everything basic. We're in base world here, right? I see only blues. So it wouldn't make sense that I'm going to look at this formula because that's for acids. Now, I can't really use this formula yet because I don't have the pH and I don't have the pOH. So I'm in pure base world here, and I could find the pOH first by just doing the negative log of the OH minus concentration. And that's why we had to do this whole thing, because now we know what the OH minus concentration is. It was 0 0.000142 molarity. 
I don't care about what this is and I don't care about what this is. But we have to do that setup so that we can get the OH minus concentration. So now I have POH equals negative log of the OH minus, which was two times the amount, 0 0.000142. POH equals, calculate out, negative log of 0.000142. Three total sig figs. So if you're doing sig figs with the pH and the POH, that just means that you need three after the decimal. So the three doesn't count. And now I need three after. Eight, four, eight. The pH sig figs are a little weird. But who cares at this point? But, but I'm just letting you know just in case your teacher or professor does. And now we found the pOH. Now we just have to go back and find the pH. Well, now I can use this formula because I just found the pOH. 14 is 14, and I can solve for the pH. But I just want to point out here that you can only use this formula if you're at room temp, which is 25 degrees Celsius. But we are. So we're good. But if they gave you a really, really high temp or a really low temp, you can't use that formula. But all the other formulas on this page are fair game. So pH plus pOH equals 14. Since we're trying to solve for the pH, I could just rearrange this formula by saying pH equals 14 minus the pOH, right? And then we'll color code this, right? Reds with reds and blues with blues. So all we have to do here now is just say, okay, pH equals 14 minus the pOH that we just found, 3.848. All right, 14 minus 3.848, I get 10.152. No units for pH or pOH, just like an indicator value on a scale, and we're good. As you can see, it's pretty high on the pH scale, that means basic, and it's pretty low on the pOH scale, which also indicates basic. But that's it, guys. We're done. Thank you for viewing the video. I really hope this helped, and if you want to help us out, please press the subscribe button. We also got physics and math videos on the channel at the moment, so go check it out, but there is a lot in store for the future. We're working on something big, so hopefully, hopefully it will be out soon for you guys. I promise you guys will like it, all right? But you must continue. Let's keep learning. I'll see you in later lessons. Bye-bye.